I am thankful for the opportunity to touch lives. I'm thankful for uh, the work that I get to do. Uh, so with that being said, look, we are in a very, very precarious situation. And unfortunately, as in so many times in the past, we don't get it. Uh, we tend to move immensely casually uh, in a casual uh, state of mind, in a casual approach, in a casual uh, sense of observance uh, to the things that have the most impact on us. Uh, we are still slipping as it pertains to uh, the racial wealth gap. Uh, the public school system as we know it is in complete turmoil and is likely being phased out. I've been talking about that for years. I've written about it in uh, my 16th and my 24th book, uh, The Miseducation of Black Youth in America and Academic Apartheid. Um, we are losing space um, in simply not developing the type of political power we need solely focusing on the vote without having anything to back it and anything to leverage to demand something for it. Uh, the vote only has value when it can produce something in return. Simply getting uh, uh, an emotional rush because your candidate won and most likely won uh, off of bull crap and you know, duped you into voting for them. And when it comes to us, we tend to be in love with uh, those who gloss us over and stab us in the back. And those are Democrats. Uh, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a person who observes people who t seem to have uh, at least a heart for doing something for my people. Those people are rare. And they don't last long in this political system because this political system is corrupt. Uh, and either you fold to it or it destroys you. And that's my observance of it, especially the two party system. You got the right wing, you got the left wing. They both belong to the same bird, a bird that's been shitting on the heads of black people for more than 400 years now. So then, what should we be doing? We should be looking at the things that affect us. This is why I've put in over 80,000 hours of research into the plight of my people from slavery through uh, reconstruction to black holes through convict leasing through uh, Jim Crow segregation, urban uh, redlining, urban renewable, non-neglect, mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, and everything else in the way that it's impacting our people, multi-generational transmission of trauma, uh, African-American, adolescent, and young adult male violence. Then I came back and I've disseminated my findings. I've produced programs that allow us to address it. I've produced blueprints that show the protocols we need to practice in order to get there. I've learned from the ancestors who came before us and my peers who are present right now on the things that need to be done. I've analyzed, expanded on it. I've literally spent my adult life giving us what we need. This is not for a pat on the back. I don't need your pat on the back. Uh, I don't need you to validate me. What I need my people to do is get busy. It's time for us to make a move. We need to individually examine where we are. We need to examine where we are. We 
need to know who we are. We need to start preparing ourselves to be more effective in our lives so that we can prepare and pave a road uh, for our progeny, our offspring, those who follow us, so that they have a clearer road and a less uh, obscure path to success, to power, um, to wealth. And it begins with educating ourselves. It begins with collectively coming together in collaboration. It begins in finding the programs that will help us heal. It begins in developing a specific, specific strategy and agenda that will allow us to move closer and closer to this thing we need. We need to attack this racial wealth gap. I not only researched it, I've not only written on it with the War on Black Wealth, I came back with uh, multiple programs that will help you not only understand the path to generational wealth, but give you resources so that you can actually um, take these resources, build online revenue streams, take these resources, learn how uh, everybody that's successful at building wealth does it. It's not some some sneaky thing they've hidden it from us because we don't look for it if it's not handed to us if, if it's not an opportunity somebody throws at us and and, and shines it up for us because we like shiny stuff we, it's got to be sensational and it's got to sound like i can do it quick and if it's not quick and it's not sensational we're not jumping on it and the ones of us who do figure it out start to feel like hey this makes me look better than my brothers. It makes me look better than my sisters. It lets me sit up here and floss and flaunt and, and talk about how great I'm doing and how awesome I am. So I'm not gonna bring everybody along because then everybody will get like me. And so you got a bunch of us out there that's flossing, just tossing around, talking about how good we are and looking down and acting like we're better than somebody else. The truth of the matter, I'm not better than anybody. My degrees don't make me better. The businesses I've started don't make me better. How many books I wrote don't make me better. I'm not better. I'm in a different situation. I'm in a different situation because I took the time to develop an understanding of what was going on in this world. I took the time to sit up and say, okay, this is how I overcome. I took the time to strategize and plan my life. And I uh, tapped into the people who had the knowledge to show me, teach me, and guide me, and mentor me. And that's what we've got to do. We can't sit around asking our enemy to fix our problems. That's got to stop. Absolutely unequivocally got to stop so again i'm challenging you whatever it is you need to do make it happen i'm going to continue to give you resources i'm going to continue to sit up and give you what i have uh, i'm going to continue to ask you if you believe in what i'm doing to support me but i'm also going to challenge you to check out some of these resources that i'm offering you a lot of it free, but some of it is costly, but all of it has super unbelievable value. And the people who don't look like you are already jumping on it. And nothing more frustrating than me is for people to take something that I mean for my people because it's sold publicly and I can't sit up there and determine what's going on. But I know how to do the research and know demographically who's buying it. Uh, the same way they know when they're reviewing applications for credit and for school acceptance and a bunch of other things uh, that you're black. So, look, we've got work to do. It's that simple. I'm challenging my people. It's time to stand up. It's time to make something happen. It's time to go to the next level. It's time for us to come together collectively. It's time for us to take advantage of the tools and the opportunities that are out there. It's time to get behind programs that are actually working. Uh, it's time to stop groveling, complaining, and whining. Those are not plans. Those are not strategies. They don't produce anything but more stress, more illness, more frustration, learned helplessness, vicarious learned helplessness, and all of these other things that literally render us ineffective in our quest for the thing we say we want the most, which is empowerment. So that's my talk for you to this morning. I'm challenging you to stand up and make something happen. And on that note, I'm going to get out of here and get in this gym. Um, uh, I'm going in with the young folks today. Normally, I would be at the uh, gym a little bit more laid back at lifetime, but I didn't feel like making the drive this morning, so I'm going to go in here with these young cats uh, and, and, and try to keep up. 
on this flow. But hey, it's what it is. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.